All right, welcome to uh, the Abbott booth at HRS. My name is David Mickey. I'm the director of US Marketing and Education based out of Austin, Texas. I have the uh, pleasure of introducing Dr. Dale Yu. So he's an electrophysiologist um, out of the Dallas, Texas area. Um, and he's had the opportunity um, of doing our first kind of Insight Connect Med in Box Insight X case um, at uh, Texas Health Allen. Is that right, Dr. Yu? And uh, he's been a leader in the field of electrophysiology, conducting a number of different education in complex arrhythmias, low fluoro techniques, um, and also in digital uh, medicine, including the remote um, and cybersecurity. So, Dr. Yu, go ahead. Thank you so much. Oh, am I on? When you use, oh, there I am. Okay. Well, uh, I don't have much time, so we'll kind of dive in it, but thank you for the introduction. And uh, I think this is great. Uh, this is a great foray into what we've kind of been doing with Teams and Zoom, uh, but integrating this into what we love to do every single day. I think this is a huge thing. So thanks for coming to my TED Talk. We'll see what we can do. Let's go on. Okay. So I, I don't think I have to state or overstate or even understate why re remote support matters. I think with the COVID world we live in, and I thought there'll be an end to it. I think it's just a new normal we're going to have. Uh, being able to continue doing what we do day to day with the safety measures that we need to do and continu continuity of safety into healthcare and still being productive and being everything we want to do with new technologies is an important part of this. Um, we want to make sure that cases can be done add-on cases occur, um, but your favorite mappers, clinicals, reps, they don't always exist. They can't be everywhere at the same time. So it's been fantastic to be able to utilize some of the support that we get with uh, Insight, Insight Connect so far, and then of course, pulling in something uh, new that's the Med in Box component. We're gonna show you here how you can basically do this entire support remotely, safely, without taking longer. Um, it's basically the same time you normally do it uh, with the best of the best anywhere in the world potentially supporting you, and I think that's really great. Also enhances the education piece. Uh, one thing we always talk about is the site that brings in a lot of new mappers, a lot of new support staff <clears throat> to kind of learn what's how to do what they need to do back home. They can now do this live with us, like they're part of the case from where they are in the comfort of their own homes and, and labs. And I think that's a really important part of that as well. So, of course, we've kind of talked about it, case support, getting input from other sites, other, uh, you know, leaders that have been a little bit more advanced in this field, maybe have experienced more cases than you and, and your team. I think that's very important. We've talked about how this is going to really revolutionize our ability to do high-level mapping, high-level technology delivery to all parts of the globe maybe to Mars if uh, we get some help with Musk and other people, but at the end of the day, we're able to help every nook and cranny of this planet uh, because there are patients on every nook and cranny of this planet and they all deserve uh, equal care, if you will. Technical support has always been there, but this really highlights the opportunity to really use that 24 support, 24 seven support from uh, a team leader, um, somebody that you may know or somebody that you wanna know and, and they can help you again remotely. I think we've, in terms of the world we live in, we've seen a, a lot of the movies that have already shown you what you can do. But what's great is I think this is the first time we're actually bringing uh, the future to today. We're probably, we actually have the technology that allows us to meld all these things. Um, as of a couple of days ago when we did our first live case with every integration, the first, as I know it, the first case in the world where we took the best of the best, we took Insight Connect and we were able to do the support with the Men in Box that allowed the mapper, the support staff to actually control items in our lab live from a remote site with minimal uh, use of bandwidth, which has been a limitation for a lot of different companies and delivery, uh, delivery technologies in the past. So at our institution, We've been able to use Insight Connect. Of course, that's uh, with X uh, definitely is a part of that and the capability is already there. Um, and again, if you have a case that goes late, goes early, a mapper is stuck in traffic, they're in another site, they're stuck in a plane. I mean, I think a lot of us here uh, continue to see those problems where uh, you're basically at the, the whim of other people and you can't really uh, take care of your patient how you want to. But at the same time, I mean, theoretically, you could be in a car, you have a Wi-Fi connection, you have some type of hotspot and you're able to get on with enough bandwidth uh, you're able to support it. In this case, we went early and our mapper wasn't there yet. And our senior mapper was available uh, remotely, was able to chime in. If you take a look at it here, there's actually text dialogue. This, uh, fortunately, it was just the other day, uh, April 22nd. So these are as live and as recent as they can get, uh, showing us what the status was. And then they were able to head up, help us get set, set up. <coughs> 
And a lot of thanks to our senior mapper, Aaron Stammer, who isn't here, but he is, uh, he and I uh, have been able to work together really well over the last decade to revolutionize the zero fluoro or minimalized fluoro techniques, but now enhancing that with remote support is, it's amazing. So he's able to help us, and even if your staff is uh, not experienced, you're able to talk them through really how to do this. I mean, we have this in almost every other arena uh, with computer support. I mean, this computer support is on the other side of the planet usually. Um, we hope that everyone speaks the same language, but in this case, we do. Um, and if you don't understand the technical parts, it's okay because the report staff, the remote staff is there to help you through that. And that's exactly what happened so we can get the patches going. So we have a case going early, and we didn't want to delay that case. And really, this patient's on the table already uh, under anesthesia, and this is, shows you the utility uh, of what you need to do to stay efficient. And, of course, for safety for the patient as well. <clears throat> so I, I kind of led into it. So the partnership with Men in Box is a very huge one. We've been working for this uh, oh, about a year now, trying to get through all of the different logistics to make this a reality. Very fortunately, uh, the universe made everything come together and in between two meetings, basically flew into town so that we could get this case done. It was an AFib case, which will show you a little part of this. Uh, Med and Box is different than Inside Connect. It utilizes that support by actually allowing you to get any inputs up to eight, I'll show you here, um, into this box and allows that connectivity back to the remote staff. So what's the difference is previously you have access as a remote staff to the mapping portion of it, but not necessarily to any other inputs from the lab. Now you have up to eight other inputs you can access, change, manipulate, uh, completely full operational effects from, uh, from another site. Uh, we talk about this uh, akin to drone usage, if you will. You know, you have a master base uh, that's on the other side of Earth, and they're controlling a very expensive module or aircraft on the other side of Earth and uh, able to do it. But in this case, it's, uh, it's akin to that. Uh, the ability is there, and it's pretty amazing. So we talked about also having audio capabilities, too. So we have direct communication with that remote staff wherever on Earth they could be. I mean, we do that already with, uh, with Teams, uh, WebEx. We do that with uh, Zoom as well. We're just basically integrating that into the technical space and able to t communicate both ways fairly seamlessly without any delay or any issues with uh, lag. We were able to do this live the other day. Really, no preparation. We just jumped in both feet down, and uh, we see what we did. And uh, like I said, it, it went very successful. Uh, as a first global launch of this, it, I think it was the best it could be, and it was pretty amazing. So, And we'll have a little footage of that as well. Um, so as you can see here from a road site, you can, uh, you can tell that they have access to the full map, starting to create it, start to do all the logistics with that. Uh, the Man in Box, again, gives you the ability to have feedback with auditory. You don't have to get on a phone. You don't have to like, communicate via a separate way. This is all integrated. And then also, if you want to move a camera, which there's a camera part of this as well that can be either mounted or on wheels as we have it, give access to camera that's already there. Uh, so if you have an advanced lab that has a bubble cam as we do, they can actually integrate that to an input and move it around, pan. This it does matter. They can show you what the patient has in terms of their patches. So you get feedback visually. You have feedback auditorily, you get feedback electrically, so basically all aspects of it at the fingertips of the remote operator, and I think that's um, very amazing. As again, being the first in the world, I think this is showing you the capabilities of what we can do going forward. So this is uh, a little video that we have, a couple minutes. Basically, that was a camera on wheels that we had. This is a case literally from two days ago, the one that we did. So... Uh, um, sparing you the audio since uh, it was our first broadcast. There's probably a couple of curse words in there. So uh, uh, we didn't know how to turn off the audio part. So it was very interesting. But uh, at least we had audio. So that was good. Two-way audio. Um, but as you can see, um, these are all the inputs that you had at the, at the laptop station on the remote site. They could see our ice. They could see our, you know, we also used ultrasound to get access to the leg. Then we switched over to the other module. Whatever's uh, coming out of that, streaming out of that, they can see it at all times. Uh, they have the camera support, like I said, and then you have the audio support on the back end. Um, we obviously have our module there, but we have vacated it after we get it set up. We really had them do nothing, but of course, this is the first launch, so in case there was something, we had someone in support. But you can see that there really doesn't need to be somebody. You train the staff. You, they don't really need to do much except for turning on a computer, if you will. Um, everything is done remotely with the two screens that you saw there. They have the ability to see all that you can see on here, including anesthesia, if you want that as well. That's another input that we had. Uh, 
Um, and again, up to eight inputs of any kind. And even though we have more and more technology going into this, uh, eight is fairly uh, a lot. That, that encompasses pretty much everything you need and then some. I think we had six going in. But if you wanted something additional, <coughs> that gives you the extra capacity of that as well. And you know, in terms of mapping, there was no delay when I was asking them to rotate the map, as my mappers hate and love me for. I, I love orthogonality. I love that word. Uh, I like to have two separate views. I want them to follow me. I asked them to do it. They did it immediately, um, just like they're in the lab. So uh, except I can't throw things at them, so I think they love the experience probably even more. Um, so being there and being able to see it live, and we, I mean, our first case, we initially thought that maybe we'd do our simple flutter, an AVNRT, let's just, you know, let's tread lightly and figure out how we use this. It didn't turn out that way, the real world doesn't. This was an AFib ablation. We went in there, we identified, and we did everything like it was in the lab. So again, the feasibility of this, it, it actually gave me no angst. I had no more stress than I normally would have. And uh, the case finished on time, otherwise I wouldn't have made it here on time either. So uh, everything really did come together just like it should be. And of course, there's some things that we're gonna tweak going forward. Um, who knows, this is an intro to this remote world that we have, and COVID really helped us launch into that remote world anyhow. And this just utilized what technology we had, some new ones, thanks to Menonbox and being able to put that all together so we can go forward, forge this into potentially other spaces. This could go potentially in the CRM. Um, I think the bounds are endless. And so I, I'm very proud and very lucky and, uh, and humbled to be a part of this first experience. Hopefully more going forward, and uh, hopefully some of you out there will have this opportunity too going forward. Um, I was speaking to an APAC leader this morning. I think the utility is huge in developing and emerging markets. Of course, the education piece is there, needs to be there more, but these are the types of technologies that allow us to do that in a safe manner, expand that knowledge to everyone around the world. So uh, again, thanks for coming to this TED Talk. I appreciate you uh, listening. I'll be around here for a little bit if you need to talk about anything else. Appreciate it.